Hello, what's up? So in this video I want to show you how to export your fiber mesh and um, create guides for Xgen. I'm also going to show you how to set up nHair in Maya. I think nHair is uh, not that popular, but I find it gives you nice results. And I'm going to go into the details later, but for now, if we look at the fiber mesh that we got here, um, I have it in the fast preview, so that's basically just reducing it to a percentage that you that you want. For your export for Xgen, you probably want to have very few. You could also take a larger amount and then delete the curves inside of Maya to 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 the amount that you want. Let's go with let's go with a good amount that so that we can pick some and. Then we go to export curves. Uh, important thing here is the OBJ doesn't work uh, with Maya for some for some reason. So if you import it, then you nothing will show up. Basically, what you want to do is set it to the Maya format, and that that should do the trick. Now, if you're going to export for N hair, it's going to be a bit different. F uh, for N hair, basically. You want to be at a point in ZBrush that you're pretty much happy with the overall shape because um, without spending too much time now explaining it, it will basically pretty much look the same but gives you some more control. Uh, you can increase the amount of hair as well but it will stick to the... Uh, similar to guides uh, but uh, more closely, much more closely and more controlled. So that's basically what you're going to get, what you got in ZBrush, which, which I like because it gives you the most control. It's more tedious, takes a bit more time, but um, I find you have the most control. So, uh, especially for hair like this, that's more messy, and you want to have um, certain shapes that can be of advantage. So, let's jump into Maya and uh, continue there. All right, now if we go ahead and take our exchange curves and import these first, and then if you press G on Maya, you repeat the last action so you can open the import again like this then select our N hair curves and you can see these are much more so first I will match these to the size here and if you have your object scaled you know you have some of them scaled you can control click any object that you know you did this um, the scaling and then you go modify match transformation match all transforms if that's um, the the white transform so um, now we have these in place let's hide first let's start with xgen so I'm gonna hide these uh, so for xgen um, I'm I'm not gonna go in depth it's uh, really just about how you trans um, transform these into guides so but for xgen you wanna um, so you wanna have your faces here I usually take out the part that I would need to to grow hair on and um, duplicate the faces off, then you can go ahead and uh, open your Xgen and create a new description, uh, set a name. Uh, with Xgen it's very important to, to um, not change names afterwards uh, from your meshes and your descriptions and everything because that will make it um, not find, not being able to reference the stuff and will cause um, a bad issue. So um, keep that in mind and just name it um, anything description test collection underscore test uh, you want to have groomable splines for longer hair uh, splines uh, excuse me and then uh, placing and shaping guides yeah this one create and now um, what you can do is you go to utilities and then you have curves to guides now you go and select the curves that we got here and now if you say add curve uh, add guides you can say delete curves here if you want to and now these are all guides and now you can go ahead and I mean these are not perfect by any means um, I'm not very proficient with Xgen admittingly so um, I find always that the interpolation between these guides uh, cause uh, un un um, desirable desi results so um, that's the reason why I sometimes for certain hairstyles like these curly uh, more unique hairstyles I switch to, to the N hair workflow which I'm gonna show you now so um, but let me show you very quick in case that's something that interests you 
here now you can go ahead and set the density here now you can see something happening um, if you, you you have your tools here in the exchange uh, tab you can select your sculpt guides now you can move these and then if you update here you can see the change happening um, you sometimes get them disappearing maybe you just need to change your camera and will update it's basically trying to to not um, to only show what's what's um, what's visible so it doesn't uh, unnecessarily tax your system but um, let's move on to N here now if we hide this we can hide this part as well unhide our curves so for this one what you want to do is basically select any primitive let's select a cube isolate that and then you go change your workspace not it's not the workspace it's um i guess your menu uh, to fx and then you have uh, the n hair option here assign uh, no not assign it comes in a second create hair uh, the settings basically output paint effects and then you could set these down but it doesn't matter really because you're gonna delete that anyway that's just to create a hair system so you apply create hairs and now if you get rid of the isolate select you can already see something happening here scoring hair here uh, you can now get rid of the cube um, you can also get rid of the follicle here uh, make sure to not delete the paint effects though because after that it wouldn't work um, you, you gotta keep this in nucleus uh, you gotta keep two with the hair system and then all you have to do is select your ZBrush curves and go N hair assign hair system assign hair system shape 1 and this might take a second depending on how many curves that was fairly quick and now you can see um, yeah, it's basically confer, uh, conf, um, is the word conforming. It's going very close to your curve. And now if you go to your attributes uh, editor with your hair system selected. Let's close this. You can see you have a whole bunch of options. So first we have hairs per clump. You can change that depending on what you what you want, uh, how, how dense uh, your um, curve amount was to begin with. Then you have um, some important things here, so sub-segments in case your curves weren't that detailed, you can see here it's maybe a bit um, uh, not smooth enough, so you can uh, add some sub-segments here, give it, give it more resolution basically. Um, another one thinning so if you especially if you have more you can see the way it ends here it's so uniform it basically looks uh, pretty bad so with thinning it just thins it out and it's doing that in a non uniform uh, manner so that's that's um, an a important setting as well then clump twist yeah you can twist it um, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. Basically, another important thing is uh, hair width, of course. Um, I don't see the effect happening right now, but you can see it in the in the render view for sure. So something like this, 0.01 to 0.015, depending on the scale, should be good. And then clump width scale. So you have the clump width. That's an important one. Um, if you had that at zero, basically they're all on top of each other, so now you can space that out. And then you have this um, graph here, and that's basically telling it uh, where to apply this effect at what point of your, of your hair. So what I sometimes like to do is here at the beginning you can say, if it's too, too, too much spaced apart, maybe that's causing issues, so you could scale that, and then of course the end point might be interesting to also scale down if you want to tape it more towards the tip or you maybe you want to have them space apart um, so there you have control over that uh, then there's some more settings displacement so you can make it curl that's kind of cool then you have the noise effect like you pretty much the same as xgen 
So you don't have as much control, but you have you have quite a bit of parameters here that you can change. And but it's as you can see, it's still staying pretty much close to what you got in ZBrush. So the great thing about that is you don't uh, you don't have to worry about any issues. Um, and uh, if you've worked with Xgen, you know. Um, I think I'm not alone here saying that there's quite a bit of issues you can come across from time to time. So that's very reliable and it's very very close to what you got in ZBrush. So if you got something nice going there, then that's that's kind of cool, I think. So yeah, noise uh, displacement here again. You have a graph that you can tell it where to, uh, where to apply the effect. And then um, if you want to assign a shader to that, um, you can go here, Arnold tab, if you use an Arnold renderer, and then say override hair, and then hair shader, you can go with um, a very nice one is with for Arnold is the AI standard hair. And to just very quickly go over these, so melanin, basically, so uh, if you have it at, at towards zero, it's going very, um, what's the name, um, blonde and then white and then you have dark brown towards here. You also have presets so you can select these, black, blonde, green. Um, specular, the roughness, I usually turn it up a little bit but um, yeah it just depends uh, on your preference and your hairstyle. And yeah, uh, melanin wetness gives it some, some wetness to it. And then you can also randomize your melanin amount that might look good because it gives you some variation. It makes it look more natural, I find. Uh, and then tint. Um, if you have strong lights, sometimes the highlights is very overpowering on the hair. And then I find um, adjusting the tint and also the diffuse um, color um, and even the opacity, these three can help you tone that down. Um, but yeah, if we if we um, assign a hair material that I, oh, let's just pick um, a preset here should work fine. Dark brown replace. Did it uh, do the trick? Yeah, I think I, I I got it. Okay, let's just take a render and see what it looks like. And yeah, I'm not going to let it render all the way. I could have um, used also here test resolution. Maybe let's do that for now, 50%. So that's going way faster, giving you obviously less resolution. So that's it. I think it looks pretty good. And um, with some more tweaking inside of ZBrush and um, better adjustment of the settings here in um, NHair system, uh, I think it can give really good results compared to XGen. I mean, I'm sure you can pull off the same with XGen, maybe better, maybe worse, who knows, but it's just another tool for you that I think um, might be cool to know. So yeah, thanks for watching and um, hope you have a nice day. Take care.